Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about some of the tools, some of the new automation tools um, that are coming to the video world. Um, and then we're going to talk about ways to implement them in your company in order to help automate aspects of your company. So we're talking about technology that reduces human intervention in a process. The key word here is reduces human intervention. Uh, but first, before we get into this, what are some of the tools that you guys use on a daily basis that you love because it reduces human intervention for you or saves you time? Dishwasher. A dishwasher? Maybe something related to work? <laughs> Slack. Slack, okay. A lot of us use Slack. Uh, MailChimp, stuff like that. Um, everybody, I think everybody uses these tools, right? They cover every aspect of business. And then we get to the video world and we see something like this, which is the opposite of reducing human intervention, right? We see about 100 people standing around. They're all unionized and they're just working on one tiny little task. And, <laughs> and they're not very efficient. Um, but things are changing. I, I also love this photo because there are all these cameras shooting on film which um, does not reduce human intervention, it increases it. So this is actually the future, right? Um, virtual productions, this is something that started with Industrial Light and Magic and uh, Disney, uh, but this technology is trickling down to local studios and is becoming more and more accessible. There's a couple reasons why this technology is really interesting. First of all, it allows you to bypass using a green screen. There are a lot of issues that come with green screen. One of them is spill, where the screen actually reflects onto your subject, and then you have to solve that later in post. It takes a lot of time. Also, lighting. Lighting a subject for a background that's not there is difficult. You have to plan ahead of time where the source of the light is, the color temperature of the light. You have to try and match that in post. But these wraparound uh, LED screens actually just naturally light the subject, um, saving a ton of time. And then you can instantly swap locations. You don't have to send uh, your crew halfway around the world to get a scene in a forest or desert. You just click a few buttons, change your virtual background, um, and this reduces travel time, environmental impact, carbon footprint, all that stuff. And then everything is captured in camera and, you know, saves a lot of time in post-production. It's essentially ready to go as soon as you shoot it. You don't have to worry about replacing the background later. So, yes, this is a little bit out of reach right now. It's still pretty expensive. But as with all new te technology, this will eventually make its way down to prosumers and then consumers. So within a very short amount of time, we'll be able to do this, you know, in the comfort of our own homes, maybe on a smaller scale with a big screen or projector behind us. But uh, this technology is coming, so I just want people to be aware of it. And I'm sure many of you have seen uh, The Mandalorian. We'll just take a quick look at how this technology works and how people are using it today. But by using Unreal Engine, tech borrowed from the video game field, that problem is solved. Artists can create a photorealistic 3D background that moves strictly with the camera's field of view, known as the frustum. So if the camera swings around and changes angles, the background shifts in precisely the same way. This allows motion tracked cameras to execute traditional cinematography techniques within the virtual set. Achieving cinematic movements like the parallax effect, where an object in the foreground moves at a different speed than the background, amplifies the illusion of filming at an actual location. Now that LED screens can move with the camera's eye, virtual sets can solve a bunch of green screen problems. The biggest one probably being lighting. Super cool. But by using un uh, but let's talk about some tools that are a little bit more accessible and you might actually use this year or in the near future. Uh, the first one is MetaHuman. These are 8K photoreal avatars. Um, I think we're going to be. I think we're going to see these in commercials uh, really soon. Probably this year, you'll start to notice them around. Um, if they're lit correctly, they're they're pretty indistinguishable from like a real person. And animating them used to be really really complex. It used to be really hard, but now there are a lot of 2D mocap solutions. Mocap is motion capture. Imagine the uh, the balls or the little markers all over an actor. 
you know, with the sensors around the room that track them in 3D space. That's being replaced by 2D mocap solutions where you can essentially, with a, a video, a 2D video, a normal video like from your phone, analyze that movement, turn it into 3D data, and apply it to your avatar. It's becoming really easy. And the crazy thing about it is it's free. So anybody can, anybody can try this and start working on their avatars. Let's, let's check, take a look at how they look. You create the narrative. I am metahuman. It's hard to see on these projectors, but there's really, really good skin texture, skin tones, and detail in there. Um, they're pretty cool. And again, it's free using Unreal Engine. Um, here's another interesting tool called Descript. Maybe some of you have heard of this one. Um, so they do automatic transcription. Um, so you just drag and drop your video into their portal, and it automatically, automatically transcribes it into text, which doesn't sound that impressive. There's a lot of companies that do this. but this is something that just a few years ago, you had to pay someone to do manually. There are a number of companies where people would sit there, watch your hour and a half long interview, and manually type it out. Just a few years ago, we were paying for this. So the fact that there's automatic and instantaneous transcription is really cool. They also have an interesting feature called Overdub, which is like a voice clone tool or a deep fake for your voice. So you send a recording of your voice, it trains, and then you can type and have your voice say anything. A lot of interesting implications with that. <laughs> um, and then probably the most interesting value proposition of this tool is that you can edit by typing. So if any of you have someone on your team that can write or edit an email, you now have someone on your team that can edit a video. It's as simple as highlighting a word or highlighting a sentence and deleting it and it automatically closes the gap, creates that edit, rearrange stuff all by text. Super cool. The number of excuses for not making video, it, they're getting smaller and smaller, right? Um, love this tool. And there might be a few of you still wondering, well, is this relevant? How do I apply this to uh, my business? Yes, it's relevant. And hopefully this next tool, this next example, will show you just some of the possibilities that are coming with this new technology. This next one is sort of uh, amalgamating a bunch of these technologies together, including Descript's Overdub, in order to create a really, really interesting uh, uh, use, number of use cases. So let's check this one out. Asia. Alan here has a lot to say, and nothing but text to say it. Emails, presentations, tutorials, typing, typing, typing. It never ends. A giant, steaming pile of text. It's just not as engaging to read as it is to watch and listen. But with Synthesia, Alan can take that text and in just a few minutes, turn it into this. In today's lesson, you will learn about how to set up for a perfect interview. He doesn't need a camera. He doesn't need a mic. All he needs are some words and a browser. Hello, Heidi. Hello. Alan would like to thank Who you for the call yesterday. With Synthesia, Alan can give anything a face and a voice, including his own. And with a little extra work, he can create a custom avatar who looks and sounds just like him. In this video, I will show some tips on how to connect more efficiently. Or sounds like him in a different language. The Berichte für dieses Quartal sind da und sehen toll aus. Our CRM system is a great source of information to learn Whoa. about customers. Now, it's easy for Alan to share anything he can type. Once you have the data, it is time to map the customer's journey to the purchase. Synthesia, turning text into something much more human. Well, almost human. Interesting, right? Uh, so just like with uh, you know, normal consumers, 
and uh, you know, crossing the chasm, there's, there's your, your innovators, your early adopters, and, and so on. The same thing happens with companies, right? Some companies are laggards and they don't want to implement new technologies. Some are on the forefront and there's a lot of people testing out and trying tools like this. Even though they're not perfect yet, there's some really, really interesting applications. Um, a friend of mine, his company is actually doing this right now. They replaced their website's chatbot with avatars of members of their actual sales team in order to reduce the number of uh, redundant phone calls that they had to field and also add a little bit of a personal connection to sales team members that they're actually working with. Really, really, really cool stuff. Um, so again, here's some of the tools that we discussed um, and some that we didn't, but basically uh, the list goes on and on. There's lots of video automation tools out there. But the important thing is how you implement them, right? Because you want to implement them in a way that reduces human intervention in a process that your company is doing. So here's just some of the ways that you can do that. Um, and I would say, you know, if you, don't, if you haven't really implemented video in your company yet, a good place to start is with anything that you find repetitive, right? If your sales team is answering the same questions all the time, um, if you're doing the same trainings with new employees all the time, Anything that's repetitive, that's a good start. You create a video or a video series, and all of a sudden you've offloaded that, right, and saved that human capital for something else. So demos and tutorials are super important, really great, really great place to start. And then uh, training, stuff that's internal, HR department, uh, new employee onboarding, uh, training sales team, those are things that can be uh, sort of sped up or, or uh, you know, offloaded by creating a video series. Customer support and testimonials. This is an interesting one. Uh, if we go back here, this bottom left corner, Vouch For, this is an interesting company that uh, Keith actually put me on to. And they do sort of like a one-click prompted video testimonial from your customers. So it's a super, super easy one-click thing and they can record um, a review, a testimonial, or even give you feedback um, and so they just make that really, really easy. I like, I like video reviews. Um, they're way more powerful uh, than written reviews, which we all know can be manipulated, right? Um, and then, you know, if you want to do a podcast or something, there's lots of tools to help you automate that. Uh, virtual events is an interesting one. Uh, we have a number of portfolio companies here at RevRoad that do virtual events for various reasons. You know, you can do... Uh, seminars, you can do workshops, you can do virtual conferences. Um, it's a great way to community build, and it's a great way to um, get some lead generation through that. Um, but there's, there's a hard way to do that, and there's an easy way to do that, and that kind of brings me to the next portion of my presentation. I actually want to bring up um, Keith from Sentient Academy and kind of ask him about some of the things that he's implemented in his company in order to automate video. Let's give Keith a hand real quick. Thank you. All right, so Keith, uh, first of all, maybe start with telling us what Sentient Academy is, for those that don't know, yeah. and some of the systems that you, that you implemented in order to speed up the process of content creation, because you're all about content, right? Yes, we're all about content. And Sentient Academy, think about this. Who knows Bob Ross, right? And who knows Master Class? Oh, but imagine the two met, dated, and have a baby. <laughs> and it's much better artist. That is Sentient Academy. We are the Master Class for the artist, but not Bob Ross, much better Master Level artist doing the content. That's who we are. We go out to capture the most amazing leading artist teaching and deliver that to over 160 countries, people out there who want to learn art but cannot walk away from their life like me to move to a new country to study with a master, now they can do it at home. So that's what we do. Awesome. And and second question. Yeah, tell us about some of the technologies and things that you've done in order to make that content creation for your classes yeah. easier. Well, today you just showed me that I barely scratched the surface. So I need to get some avatar of myself to say different things in different languages. 
<laughs> we need to talk about that. By the way, Andy, he's amazing. He's helping us with video, and we went from here to here, and we're still going um, up higher. So a couple of tools. If you want to go back to that screen, the tech, yeah. So we are thinking about using Vouch4 to get some customer testimonial. Um, we are using OBS um, this whole time. We actually are one of the first companies that started doing live streaming artist workshops before everybody else is doing it, before the pandemic actually hit. Remember March last year? Was it two years? Two, years. Two, two years ago, March, everything shut down. In January, we started doing live streaming artist workshop because I see into the future, we use OBS that whole time. And um, Hoopla is a big one too. That's actually what we use for our virtual event platform this year for Vision X. So if you want to know what it, it does, if you have a phone, go to visionx.live. That is Hublo, built on Hublo. And we're able to do a lot of cool interaction. Right now you just see a landing page. Yeah, tell, it, tell us about that. So Vision X is your live art conference. Mm -hmm. Last year was your first year. Yes. Super successful, yeah. but tell us the platform you ran it on and <laughs> what experience you had, and then and then tell us uh, um, what you set it up on this year. Yeah. So last year, because it was the first year event and people really didn't know what's going to come out of it, so we want to play it safe. So I spent a month build the whole event platform on Wix. So we spent six hundred dollars on Wix for the whole year, and then set up a hundred Zoom events. <laughs> <laughs> and we pull in, maybe you can beat this online, but we made $113,000 from $600 last year. And what was the experience like the running all the Zooms? Who went to Vision X last year? And then Darren went there too. The experience was mind-blowing because, again, if you were thinking about content, if you go back to the very first slide, you're reducing the human intervention but you're not replacing human. And when it comes to video, the content matters. So if you have a good content, even though it's Zoom, even though the audio is terrible, nothing is 4K, 8K like that, but the content is there. We know exactly what people want to hear about, then we deliver that, even though we're just using Zoom, but we leverage technology to deliver that content to the people who are willing to see it, then they love it. So they're asking for another one this year, and the only negative feedback they have is, oh, I wish the platform is a little bit more user-friendly, because, I mean, after all, it's on Wix, right? Um, so that's why we reinvested a bunch of that money into Hublo as a virtual event platform. And trust me, I searched and interviewed many key players, including Hopin. Um, there are several other ones. Hopin is the big one that's making a lot of noise, but we ended up with Hublo. Um, it's really robust. So last year, it took me two months to build it in Wix, right? This year, guess how long it took me to get that s site spin up? It's live now. We can go in to start having meeting interaction, one-on-one, -on -one, all kind of stuff. Do you know how long it took me to set up? Take a guess. Andy's going to give away $500. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks. Two hours. <laughs> yeah, right? Two dollars. No. If you go back to that first slide, that's the point of this whole conversation is how do you reduce? We're not going to take it all away, but we reduce it from a whole month to two hours. Now I focus my time on getting the presenter lined up instead of building the platform. So anything else? No. Yeah. So I think you hit it, you hit it perfectly. Um, you were able to reduce human intervention on your part, but the experience is actually going to get better for everyone yeah. else, right? Yeah. So. If you want to get a ticket to Vision X, come see me after this. Okay. Awesome. Um, before we let Keith go, any questions for him and what, uh, what he's done with Sentient Academy or Vision X? Yeah, Darren. Can you just share a little bit about what, like, results were like last time versus what your vision is for this time? Yeah, so last year we had 
hundred registrants um, watching the event, and they are still watching the replay now. So that's why we did is we had live passes, people can join in live, and they are also able to get the replay pass. And um, this year, the vision is um, we're gonna make it like a, imagine this, you are a PhD, you need to do a final dissertation presentation to a handful of very fancy people in front of you, but the rest of the world, world is not gonna hear about you. Imagine Vision X, that place for the artists. They're gonna come and share their latest discoveries, their latest work, even technology, which I think you need to do a keynote there. And we're gonna have someone to come in to talk about NFT, a co-founder of an NFT, NFT platform to talk about NFT. So all of this industry leading knowledge, we are gonna put that in front of every single artist that's there to push the entire art industry forward for a better future. And that's why as nerdy as it gets, in my brand, it makes sense to call it vision to the X power. So if you are a very mathematical person, you will see it's actually vision with the X in a corner, and X is unknown, but also makes it exponential. So discover your X factor to put into your vision to carry your vision to the X power. That's what the whole vision X is about. I don't know if people really get it, but <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> We all get it. Yes. We all get it. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. Keep, let's, give, let's give him a big hand. We appreciate you. Oops. All right. So uh, that pretty much brings us to uh, the end of my presentation. Any questions for me about video automation or any of these tools that we talked about? What would be the best platform to create and deliver that? For an online course? Mm -hmm. That would be a great question for Keith. So talk to him after, because this is essentially what he does. So make sure to talk to Keith. Great question. Anything else? Perfect. OK, for anybody uh, that missed it, this QR code just gives you a link to all the tools that I talked about in this presentation. Feel free to snag that. And uh, yeah, that concludes my presentation. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.